All right, uh, I got Illinois this week. Uh, I get a chance to go back and play a game there in Memorial Stadium. Obviously, uh, our kids are excited. Probably be one of the last times uh, we'll get a chance to play a Big Ten team. So uh, we're excited about that opportunity. Uh, kids are anxious. Uh, we'll leave on Thursday. Probably leave here around 6.30, drive about halfway, and then uh, finish the trip up on Friday. Yeah, get a walk through there at the stadium and do all of our meetings there at the hotel. But, uh, you know, uh, the word out of Illinois is uh, they're a much improved football team. I think the thing that glaringly stands out is, is they got return a lot of experience on their offensive line. Uh, they got a new quarterback in there named Wes Lunt. He's a very good football player. Uh, he's a guy that can obviously stand in the pocket there and, and make all the throws. Uh, they got a good group of receivers there. They did lose some experienced receivers, but uh, they're very confident in their group that they have uh, filling in for the, the, the guys that have left. Running backs, uh, very good running backs. You know, uh, they find ways to get those guys the ball a lot of different ways, whether it's just handing the ball off, screens, or in the passing game. And they got really good tight ends also that are a vital part of their package. Uh, defensively, they feel like they're a much improved group uh, from a year ago. They brought in some junior college players there, moved some guys around, uh, probably have changed up some scheme things. Uh, we'll probably know more about that on Saturday, but uh, all indications are that they've changed some things up than they've done in the past there. They returned their whole secondary that was back from last year. Uh, really good kicker, a uh, really good punter. So it'll be a, a, a good opponent for us there to start out the 2014 season. Is it tough to get a gauge on them because you, it's the first game, you're going everything based on last year? You, you admitted they had some new people? And well, they got some new people obviously filling in, you know, but you can watch some of those guys, whether you watch uh, their high school film, junior college film, or, uh, you know, at Oklahoma State, you can see uh, Lunt play there. But, uh, you know, one thing Illinois is never short on is talent. Uh, I think, you know, even going back from when I was there, uh, I saw it just a stat the other day that said they have the second most amount of NFL players in the Big Ten, uh, only to Ohio State. So uh, one thing Illinois has and they'll always have is, is a bunch of very good football players. You mentioned the kids being excited about it, but what does it mean to you? You know, with your experience you know, it's back a, in that stadium with a different team, with your team? <laughs> it'll, it'll be the first time back uh, since I left. Uh, when I left to go to South Carolina, you know, I just picked up and really other than one trip back to help my wife move. Uh, this will be my first time back as far as being around the football uh, arena and that kind of thing. But, uh, you know, we had some great wins there. Uh, you know, we had some great wins in that stadium. You know, uh, Coach Paterno brought his team in one year and they had a really good team. It was the year we went to the Rose Bowl and we had a, a great game that day. And I think the last time we had an 11 o'clock game, we played Wisconsin when they were five. And uh, we beat them that day. and. So we've had some nice wins in that stadium, and Coach Sims and I are, are looking forward to getting back in Memorial Stadium. What's it, uh, the 11 o'clock start? I, I, the kids mentioned, you know, they've been up all summer. You know. I, I, I love the 11 o'clock, you know. Uh, it's uh, get up and go play football. You don't sit around all day in a hotel, uh, anxious, you know, butterflies, those kind, those kind of things. Our players have trained all summer, uh, and then even through camp, but even all summer, at 7 a.m., we start training and our whole team trains at 7. So these guys are used to getting up and going. I think our pregame meal is at 7.30. So uh, we should be ready to roll. Is uh, playing them first, do you like it? I mean, Michigan State was... I, I, I like playing them first, you know. Uh, when I look back to last year, uh, I, I like playing this, uh, I guess you'd call it a money game, uh, first and, and getting it out of the way. Have you seen any offensive continuity pickup since Dante was named starting to get more reps, you know, with well, the I think, you know, now that everyone knows uh, that he's our starting quarterback, I think the receivers have, are more comfortable. I think just everything's probably flowed a little bit better. A lot of the indecision about who our quarterback's going to be, it takes it off their plate. And uh, we've had a really good, uh, you know, preparation. We've had great preparation for Illinois. Uh, yesterday was a great practice. The kids had Sunday off. Uh, even last week, we had uh, really good preparation for Illinois. So I think our kids are excited. Can you talk about, I mean, you said last Big Ten game maybe for a while. Um, does that matter that you maybe aren't, aren't going to play these teams anymore? Well, you know, I, I always I, I like playing the Big Ten teams because of just 
the geographical area. You know, uh, we you know we got Pitt and West Virginia on the books for the next uh, few years, but it was nice to go and play Michigan State, Penn State, Illinois. At one time, I think we had uh, Ohio State on the books. So, you know, I think those are uh, this is Big Ten country. So those kids can relate to that and uh, have an opportunity to play those guys uh, is something that they uh, look forward to. Is, is the game plan for uh, Dante? Is, I mean, he's your starter. I mean, any. any we're gonna, no, we're going to play him. You know, we're going to let him go play. Uh, you know, I, I don't. Uh, I don't foresee us putting Hunter Wells in the game uh, right now at this point. Uh, we're going to continue to bring him along, and uh, we don't want to put him out there in a situation where uh, he can't be successful. You talk about uh, Will Mahone joining the team yesterday. Uh -huh. Your decision to. Uh, Will Mahone is a is a guy that uh, you know I think you see all over the country uh, a lot of programs and, and people in general give people second chances and uh, here's a local guy uh, from our area and uh, you know why 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 shouldn't we give him a second chance uh, you know you see programs across the country all over giving guys second chances third chances four chances and. Uh, you know, I uh, investigated the whole situation uh, in, in a lot of different ways. And uh, he's going to come on our football team. He's going to walk on. Uh, he's going to earn his way. And uh, he knows he's got some work to do and some things that he needs to get straightened away. But uh, we're excited to have him part of our team. Uh, he's not eligible to play. Uh, so it's a situation where he can use this year to train and, and get, him a get him acclimated again to the defensive side of the ball. We're going to play him at outside linebacker and uh, just bring them into our program and put our arms around them and, and uh, give a local guy a chance. So he will not be eligible this year, though? No, sir. You make it clear that he doesn't get a third chance with you? Or oh, I mean, everyone knows that you don't, you don't get third chances with me. Uh, I think uh, I've made that clear since I've been here. Uh, we have a high standard, the way you're supposed to conduct yourself as a member of this program, uh, and that's what we expect to do. I think kids always need help. and. I think it's our job, too, to keep a support system around people, uh, no matter who it is, to make sure that they have a chance to be successful. Is Will a kid you recruited out of Austin Town? Did you know him? Oh, yeah. We, we, we looked at him. And I, I really, out of high school, uh, I thought he'd be an outs, uh, outstanding outside linebacker. You know, I know they brought him in and, and played him at running back and, and did some things at receiver. But I really felt like he could be a special outside linebacker just because of his athletic ability. Is that what you see him here? Yes, sir. We're gonna, that's where we're going to start him out at. Rich, can you talk uh, a little bit with <clears throat> not only having a, quote, new quarterback, but a, a restructured, rebuilt to a degree offensive line and how that will impact um, your approach to the early part of the game? Well, you know, I have a lot of confidence in that group, uh, our offensive line. Those are all guys that we've uh, invested a lot of time in. We've put a lot of reps in. And we've created a lot of different situations for those guys. Uh, and I'm sure there'll be some butterflies with those guys. But, uh, you know, we expect those guys to go out and play well. Uh, this is our biggest, most athletic group that we've had up front uh, since I've been here. And, uh, you know, we've, we've got nice size across the board. Um, they're athletic. They can run really well. And, uh, you know, I think the future looks bright uh, for those guys as far as their careers uh, here at Youngstown State and, and maybe even further than that because there's a guys that – there's a group of guys there that could be really special. What do you guys need to do offensive or defensively to slow down on offense to put up a lot of points last Yeah, they put up uh, 30 points. Uh, one thing you see with uh, Coach Q, but he's their offensive coordinator, is is uh, a lot of creativity. Uh, the thing I see is is he finds ways to get his playmakers the ball. You know, he's going to find a way uh, to get Ferguson the football. Uh, and he'll do that in a bunch of different ways. Um, he's got some receivers that he has some confidence in, some tight ends too. So he'll try to uh, formation you, uh, do some different things there, uh, create run-pass conflicts, uh, those type of things. So we're going to have to obviously be creative in some of the things that we're asking our players to do there. But uh, they are a very creative offense. You know, they averaged 30 points a game last year. Uh, since Coach Cubitt's been there, they've – uh, just improved drastically as far as overall performance. And now with the quarterback, I think he probably even feels more comfortable with the offense, whereas maybe with Shieldhouse, he was a little bit more of a running style quarterback. Uh, now he's got a guy that can sit back in there and fire that ball around. So, uh, but they're a, they're a very creative offense. What do you do to slow down the tempo? <clears throat> 
Well, they, you know, they've shown that they like to go fast. Uh, and I think the thing is, is, you know, anytime you get teams that want to go fast, you got to somehow get them behind the chains. You know, you got to get them in second and 12. Uh, you got to get them in situations where they want to slow the game down a little bit. Uh, there's some new things going on with the referees now about making sure that everyone's in position so they can make accurate calls. How much is that going to slow the game down or not? Uh, we've been practicing against the up tempo though uh, quite a bit in preparation for, uh, you know, obviously Illinois and other people because it's such a trend in college football. But, uh, you know, they'll try to snap the ball every 15 or 18 seconds. Are you going to try to rotate players in to try to keep people fresh off the game? Well, you know, it's based on uh, kind of where we are in the football game. You know, uh, if we get into a situation where they're substituting, then we're allowed to substitute. They have to give us time to substitute. But if they're not and they're going fast, you don't have that opportunity. Uh, it's the same 11 guys against the same 11, though. When you talk about <coughs> having the confidence to win this game, how much does it help that you guys won one of these two years ago and convincing maybe younger guys? Well, you know, I think the thing a lot of times with confidence is – is I think you earn a right to be confident. And uh, and that comes back to your preparation, you know. And I think if you prepare the right way, um, you practice the right way, you put in work in the off season, and you're doing things right, I think you earn a right to be confident. And uh, it's not fake or, or false confidence. And that's something that we've instilled in players. Uh, there's been numerous times I've told you guys that, you know, the most important thing that we can do today is go out and have a great – a great practice, great preparation, because it, the confidence becomes contagious. Uh, and we see it all the time uh, in college football. There's a lot of FCS teams, and there's a bunch of teams in our conference that probably have a chance to win this weekend. And we need that for our conference. When, when you were at Illinois, or, did you play, or South Carolina, did you play lower level teams? We did. We played South Carolina State. And, and what did Spurrier tell the players <laughs> At that point, he you know. he warned them. He warned them all week about being ready to play, and uh, it was actually a game that we hung on for dear life uh, to win that football game until until really the second half. But in the first half, they were toe to toe with us. South Carolina State, I think, had a playoff team that year. They had several pl uh, guys that won and played pro football, but uh, you know, uh, it's still eleven guys on eleven. You know. Uh, I know they have 85 scholarships and we have 63, but you can only play 11 guys out there at one time, and uh, you know that's that makes it a little bit more of an even playing field. When you beat Pitt several years ago, you had some trickery. I mean, I know you have that for every game. Does it kind of? Do you need more of that? I don't. I don't know that trickery necessarily is the answer. You know, because the thing is, is uh, sometimes you can outthink yourself. You know, you got to get into a flow of a football game, and uh, find out exactly. You know. Early on, are the, you know, is is the opponent doing what you expected them to do? Uh, what do we plan to do to attack that? If they're not, then how do we need to change that? But uh, I don't think going out there and running a bunch of trick plays, you can you can out trick yourself and then put yourself behind the chains, and then you may have to settle for a field goal or something like that. Is there anything you can do to get guys ready for the atmosphere? You know, the type of, so the moment isn't too big for them. I thought well, sure you said you. We'll have some noise at practice, you know, and, and those kind of things. And that's really just to get the quarterback and all the communication, getting those guys uh, speaking in a loud, loud tone of voice. But, uh, you know, uh, we'll be in there in the, in the arena on uh, Friday and get a chance to see it and look around. And it's a great place to play. they got a beautiful press box there. And, uh, you know, it's the home opener. And they got a lot of excitement there that uh, they feel like they're going to have a good football team this year. And, and they should. They, they – uh, They've got good players, and you know they want to get back to a bowl game. What are the expectations for this team this year? I mean, I think, uh, like always, is 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 to win. You know, and uh, that's something that we talk about. You know, not having specific goals as far as let's get caught up and and trying to say we're undefeated at home and those kind of things. Our our main objective right now is to win, and the way you go out and win football games is is obviously being prepared. And then continuing to stay in the moment. Uh, don't get ahead of yourself. Uh, don't start worrying about whether ESPN game day is going to be here, and that's a week or two weeks away. We got to continue to stay grounded, stay in the moment. Try to uh, put put some earplugs in when people tell you, you that you're doing good things, and 
you know, just continue to emphasize staying in the moment right now. And that's something that uh, this team and our leaders of our football team need to do.